A little over a year ago, I made a video talking about Woodkid and God Eater. But looking back on it, I don't think it does either of those levels justice anymore. Both because they were unfinished at the time, and because the video itself was kinda surface level. Now that the levels have been finished and previews have been released, I think it's the perfect time to have another look at them. If you've seen the old video, you may remember that I wasn't very kind to either level, so let's see if any of that will change. First, let's talk about Woodkid. Jakers actually redid some parts from the ground up, which initially got my hopes up for the level, as the concept for it is very unique and interesting to me. But the execution the first time around left a bit more to be desired, to say the least. The original version was messy and cluttered, and the gameplay looked terribly unfun, since you could hardly tell what was going on half the time. Now, let's have a look at the new and improved Woodkid. Alright, so I have to quickly mention this. I love this Marvel-inspired over-the-top introduction sequence. It's hilarious and brilliant and I fucking love it. It's like the perfect parody of this culture of overhyping extreme demons nowadays. Anyway, moving on with the level. Patience is the shield of the soul, huh? Well, I bet Boltstep is going to need a lot of patience for this level if he has to watch the opening every single time he dies. Oh boy. I've mentioned this in a video before actually. I uploaded this video showing the Woodkid intro 1000 times in a row and it turned out to be 4 hours in length. That means for every 1000 attempts where he doesn't use his start position, he will spend 4 hours total waiting for the level to start. Jakers is basically adding 15 seconds of respawn time just to show off some art. That's not to say the art is bad though. I think it looks brilliant. The way this city seemingly rotates by using parallax movement gives it a very grand and imposing feeling to it, and the lighting in this whole part is definitely great. The level of detail on this gate is absolutely crazy, and this skull here looks like... Uh, wait, hold on a second. Ah, so as it turns out, a lot of the art in this level was traced from other sources. It kind of takes away from the experience knowing that this wasn't original, but hey, it still looks good, so I guess it's fine. It's not like it's easy to make something like this even with a point of reference. Anyway, so the intro looks great and all, but that doesn't mean I'd want to sit through it a thousand times when playing the level. I mean, imagine if you had to watch Zombieland every time you wanted to retry a level. It's a great film for sure, and maybe it could be fun the first 50 times, but Eventually, it would get pretty obnoxious. You have to consider the fact that this is still a Geometry Dash level, so you absolutely have to factor in the experience of the player when creating your level. Adding 15 seconds to the respawn time gets old really really fast, especially in a game like this. From the video description, it seems like Jakers flat out admits that the level is not fun to play at all, and that it's better to watch it in a video. The question then arises, fucking why? If you know your level is not fun to play, why not do something about it? I can't wrap my head around this mindset at all. If you want your level to be purely a visual experience, then why make it an extreme demon? You could have just made it an auto level and circumvented the problem entirely, and the level would have been 10 times better. It seems to me that Jakers doesn't care much for the quality of his level if he knowingly makes it shit. There's no excuse for that. Anyway, moving on to the real part of the level now. So I think remaking this level did pay off in some aspects. The transitions look nicer, the designs are a bit better, but ultimately that doesn't solve the most glaring issue with this level, which is that it's messy. It's hard to make out what's even going on in the level a lot of the time, which just makes the gameplay that much more annoying. Speaking of which, I think this style of gameplay, which involves spamming as many portals as possible, is one of the worst gameplay styles I've ever encountered. It's one of the reasons I'm not a big fan of the Toxin lab series, but Woodkid takes it to a whole new level of ridiculous. And yeah, I know he's already admitted that it's not fun, but that doesn't make the criticism invalid. To claim otherwise is just a cop-out. God damn it! Finally an extreme demon I can masturbate to. Christ. This has been missing from my life since the day I started playing this game. Five points for Woodkid. So let's talk about the block design a bit more. The blocks in Woodkid are often crammed with as many little details as possible, which is kind of similar to the core style, which you may or may not have heard of. If you weren't aware, core looks something like this, and it's one of the more controversial styles in the creating community. Personally, I think it looks pretty bad. Core tends to just look messy since it causes a sensory overload. There's so much going on that there's no way to keep track of the level unless you make a conscious effort to not focus on it, which is 
self-defeating in the first place. The same thing is happening here in Woodkid, with some effect added in for good measure, so it looks even more messy. You know, I think some of the later parts in the level are actually not that bad. The art here has this nice lighting effect applied to it, and the blocks look much cleaner, so the background and foreground contrast better, making it easier on the eyes. If the whole level would have been like this, I think it could have been very visually appealing at least, despite the shitty gameplay. Sadly, only a few parts do this right, so most of the level still ends up looking like a washed over mess. Comparing God Eater to Woodkid was also stupid and I never took part of it in order to argue, cause there is simply nothing to argue, TPH. You wanna fucking fight me, Jakers, huh? Is that it? Meet me in the ring and say that shit to my face. I'll ass blast you to high heaven and back. You fucking piece of garbage. It wasn't even my idea to compare God Eater to Woodkid in the first place. I did it because the community liked to compare the two of them for some reason. And while it may not make much sense at first glance, I think if you look closer, you'll find plenty of overlap in the two levels. Both have a large focus on art, both have a sort of heavenly theme to them, and they both came out at roughly the same time, so they are competing for relevancy. They also spoke on the term divine, divine demon, which was a gracious gift from C, which would later be memed to hell and back. I mean, how can demons be divine in the first place? Aren't they supposed to be from hell or something? So let's have a look at God Eater now. Wait, before we can do that, we have to sit through this shitty intro. Ugh. Please bear with me. It never ends. You gotta see your life for ending shambles. You've learned to breathe, but you can see you're drowning. Divine Demon. Whoa, the Divine Demon title was made up by C? Way to shift the responsibility there, buddy. Anyway, let's get into it already, Jesus. So let's start with the gameplay of this level. I think we're all pretty familiar with Noble Boy's gameplay style, seeing as a lot of the videos he uploads are layouts. A lot of his gameplay involves pretty straightforward cube sections, some flying parts, and another thing you see a lot of is UFO parts with jump rings in them. He also likes to put jump rings in ship parts from time to time, and uh, uh, I swear there was another thing. Oh yeah, it's the fucking dual wave he claimed ownership of, like a douchebag. So now every time someone dares to use a dual wave in their level, all the comments will be is a timestamp with Noble Boy XD. So yeah, it's the same old gameplay we're familiar with here too. It's pretty straightforward, not very interesting in itself, but at least it looks kind of enjoyable. Except so it's got Woodkid beat in that aspect. Now for the design of the level, which I know many people have creamed their pants over. And I mean that quite literally. Seriously, they're the kind of people who revere Noble Boy as a literal god. Probably have a shrine dedicated to him in their house, pray three times a day, and struggle on beating electrodynamics. Really though, can we stop worshipping regular people as deities in this community? It's fucking embarrassing and a little disconcerting, honestly. It's like the Geometry Dash equivalent of this horribly toxic celebrity culture and I fucking hate it. Please stop it. It's fine if you like Novel Boy, but please act like a normal human being and don't embarrass yourself by unquestionably kissing his ass all the time. Anyway, I digress. Let's get back on topic. So much like Woodkid, I think a lot of the art in this level was copy as well. Um, it's not a big deal, honestly, but it's worth noting. Like I said before, it's not like having a reference point automatically makes it cruise control. Now I can definitely see why people like God Eater as much as they do, but I also think those people tend to overlook the flaws in it as well. The block design in God Eater is alright for the most part, but it does have some parts where the design is pretty subpar. I think one problem with this level is that it relies so heavily on the art in the background that the foreground tends to fall by the wayside. In some parts, the back and foreground kind of clash with each other or they blend together, causing it to become kind of a clusterfuck. Uh, for the most part, I think the level looks pretty good though. I think God Eater has a pretty cool concept going for it, and it manages to execute it decently well. I like the amount of variety in this level, even if some parts drag it down a bit. And now we arrive at the end of the level, where some final art appears. I think this art is kind of out of place for this level, it feels like it doesn't fit with the theme of the level at all. It's way too dark and gritty for that. Not only that, but you can hardly make out what it is anyway, so it just kind of looks bland. And of course, it wouldn't be a Noble Boy level if it didn't have a silly quote at the end. Ooh boy. Well, that about sums it up, and I think the verdict is pretty clear on this one. It seems that despite Jaker's efforts to redesign the level, he has not managed to convince me, so God Eater takes the first place once again. <laughs> Of course, this is all opinion based, but I'm sure I don't have to tell you that, right? So yeah, that's the end of that. Be sure to leave your thoughts and opinions about the video in the comments. And if you want to talk to me directly, you can join my Discord server, which I will link in the description. Ah. 
It never ends. You gotta see your life will end in shambles. You learn to breathe. <laughs>